Yes, welcome on the day. Your little brother and sister ask you why is it so chilly and uh, hope to them because obviously it's a geography class. Welcome, I'm Bonzet. Welcome to another geography lesson. Uh, Liberty, thank you very much for this opportunity. And yes, hopefully some good news. Many of us are returning to our schools next week. So hopefully everything will get back to normal soon. Now guys, unfortunately last week we just started doing map book questions. So we've managed to look at area, we've managed to look at distance, how to calculate it. We looked at auto photos. We had a beautiful question from, I just want to check, I think it was from Gift. Gift asked me what was the four different types of aerial photographs. I'll explain that to you guys. And many of you, Violani, asked me about gradient. I had to calculate gradient and bearing. And Alexa also asked me to calculate magnetic bearing. And then Cabello, there was a question from Cabello to ask gradient. But unfortunately, we ran out of time, so I'm going to take this time to explain those questions. And thank you very much for the questions that came in regarding GIS, Geographic Information System. So we will definitely discuss these questions probably in the next hour or so. Okay, but let's get straight into it. So let's just quickly recap. If you look at our map in front of us, very important pointers that I've shown you. I just want to use my green pen over here. Keep in mind, this is your first key, the map scale. One to 50,000, it's known as the top. We are dealing with two maps over here. Our autophoto map, it's a very special bit. Why did we say it's special? Because it's got information on it. It's got contour line and express altitude in it. And the scale makes it useful because we can go and calculate distance. Okay, that's an autophoto. One to 50,000 map topographical map, that's the scale. Okay, just, just go quickly make a couple of notes so that we don't forget what we've learned. One to 10,000, autophoto. Okay, one to 50,000, topographical. Okay, now we can distinguish between the two of them. Now, we have a scale that provides us, as you can see, they've got a scale. So with these scales, what we can, as geography students, we can go and calculate distances between certain places. That's absolutely beautiful. Now, what we've learned as well, which one is bigger, the one to 10,000 or the one to 50,000? Now, keep in mind, the autophoto has been reduced 10,000 times. The topographical map has been reduced 50,000 times. So what can we say, the autophoto is five times bigger. Okay. And then we started looking at our calculations. So we work with kilometers and we work with meters. I'm just going to draw a small table over there. When we want to go and calculate kilometers on a 1 to 10,000 map and on a 1 to 50,000 map, we use different formulas. For kilometers on an autophoto, we use the formula 0, 0,1. On an autophoto, we use the formula 5. If you want to go and calculate your answer in meters on an between area A and area B, you times it with 100. If you want to go and calculate the distance between two areas, two objects, you're going to times it with 500. Now that's our formulas. Then we also looked at area, it's length times breadth. Hope you're aware to use your formulas. Depending on which map you use, that you're gonna use. If you're gonna use an autophoto and you need your answer in square kilometers, you're gonna times your length and your width for 0, 0,1. If, let's, let's just do an example. We need to revise, we need to revise, okay? We go over this to make 100% sure, be 100% certain what we're doing. So let's assume we have our cultivated land over here. And what do we know about this cultivated land? Let's assume it's on a topographical map. Topographical map is a map similar to this map we have on our screen over here. Okay. So let's assume this cultivated land is an area on here that we need to go and calculate. So what do we do? Let's go back to our cultivated land. We need to go and calculate the area of this cultivated land. 
So let's assume the length is 10 centimeters and her breadth is 4 centimeters. Okay. Now, question is calculate in square kilometers. So what do we do? Area equals length times breadth equals 10 centimeters times 0 0,5 times 4 centimeters times 0 0,5. Okay, I know the answers, but we need to use our calculator to be 100% certain. Let's just use that one over there. Okay, so I just quickly have a look at it. 10, I'm going to close this. 10 times 0, 0,5. That gives an answer of 5. I'm going to take my calculator away. And then if you look at our next one, 4 times 0, 0,5 equals 2. Okay, that's quite a simple calculation. 5 times 2 and give me a final answer of 10 square kilometers. Okay, so keep in mind, depending on which map you use, you need to use the correct formula. Okay, formula for autofocus map, formula for topographical map. Okay, now, just want to go back to my map quickly. So we discussed area, that's one of the calculations, that was one of the questions of last week. And then we look at magnetic declination. So I explained magnetic declination to you, but the question that Rihani, no, Pollux asked, she asked me magnetic bearing. And unfortunately, we didn't get to explain magnetic bearing to you. Now, magnetic bearing is basically it's magnetic declination plus true bearing. Okay. So the reason why examiners prefer to ask him this question is because it's basically two stones, two birds of one stone. So we're asking you to determine and calculate to get a final answer. So let's just quickly have a look at an example. Let's just quickly do an example. Uh, just want to scroll down my page. Let's assume the question states, calculate the magnetic bearing from point A to point C on the topographical map. Now that's the question. Now immediately you need to focus two things that are asked in this question. They've asked you to go and calculate magnetic bearing, magnetic declination, and they ask you to calculate bearing. So, because we identify that magnetic bearing consists of a formula of magnetic declination plus true bearing. Okay. Now, I've explained magnetic declination. The magnetic declination will always be found on your map, given to you usually on the side of the map or below the map between your two references, your keys. It represents certain things, trainal rivers, non-trainal rivers, uh, excavations, little keys that you usually find on your map on the bottom. It's keys, references that we can find certain areas on your map. So magnetic declination is in between them or on the side of the map. But I'm just going to use my own map. So let's assume on our map, the magnetic declination, is 25 degrees, 42 minutes, and the map was drawn in 2005. They mentioned that the annual change is four minutes west. Okay. So the question, if you go back to the question, calculate the magnetic bearing. I should actually enter there, present. Okay, what's the present year? 2020. So if we go back to our formula, magnetic bearing equals magnetic declination plus two. What do we need to do? We need to go and calculate the magnetic declination. This is the information that was on a map. So first of all, what do we do? Annual change means it changes yearly. Okay, this map was drawn up in 2005. What's the difference between 2020 and 2005? 
15. Am I correct? So it has changed 14 minutes west every single year. So we need to go and calculate how much change has taken place since the map was drawn. I'm going to use a different color pen. So it's 2020 subtracting 2005. This is 15 because this map was drawn in 2005. And we need to calculate the present, present magnetic bearing. So it's 15 times 4. Okay, let's quickly go and calculate that. 15 times 4 gives us 60. Interesting. 60 minutes. Remember, that was 4 minutes. Now, what have we learned last week, Ratos? Very importantly, we're dealing with what? We're using degrees, minutes, and seconds. Okay. So 60 minutes equals what? One degree. And what else did we learn last week? The direction. When it moves west, what do we do with our magnetic declination? We add. When it moves east, what do we do? We subtract. Okay, because it's moving west, what are we going to do? We're going to add the one degree. So what is it? 25 degrees, 42 minutes, plus one degree. Gives me 26 degrees, 42 minutes west. Now, great 12, we're not done. So we've finished the one calculation. That's the reason why I'm saying it's two birds of one stone, because they are magnetic bearing. So we've calculated magnetic declination. Now, what do we still need to go and do? We still need to go and calculate the magnetic, the true bearing. Okay. So we have just calculated the magnetic declination. Let's quickly go and calculate the true bearing. In this case, they are from point A to C on the topographical map. Okay. Now let's use this map. I'm quickly going to see if I can use the protractor on this map. Let's just point A. And this is point. The simple rule of thumb, the rules, the steps I've asked you to go and calculate, be similar to direction. Except for using direction, our 16 column. The first rule is to go and draw a north south line. Second rule, I'm wearing two. The third rule, I just want to see if I can make this. Excellent, I can. As you can see, I place my protractor on my feet, my degrees. There's zero, we move in a clock, as you need to move in a clockwise direction. Okay, 85 degrees. Okay, just want to delete my protractor over here. In a clockwise direction. Okay, so the protractor is five degrees. The second calculation for our answer. 26 degrees. 42 plus, what did we say? 85 degrees equals what? So I'm just going to add up 26 plus 85. 26 plus 85 equals 111 degrees and 42 minutes. West. Now, as you can see, magnetic bearing consisted of the magnetic bearing, consisted, uh, apologies, magnetic declination plus the true bearing. So, the true bearing we calculated. We basically draw a north south line, we draw a line from where in two, we placed our protractor on our north and we started working in a clockwise direction. And that's how I managed to get the 85 degrees. And if you look at the formula once again, magnetic bearing equals magnetic declination plus true bearing, and you combine the two. Hopefully that answered your question. Now let's just quickly go back to our map. Next question I want to have an answer, I just want to clean up a little bit, is gradient. Okay, so when we look at gradient, what do we know about gradient? Gradient means altitude. We can almost say how steep a gradient is. A gradient can be steep or it can be gentle. Okay. Now we need to go and determine gradient because what do we need to do? We want to determine, is this a steep slope from point A to point B? 
or is it the gentle slope? Now, what do we use? What measurement do we use to determine gradients? We do not refer to heights of mountains in kilometers because the unit of measurement is just too big. So when we describe gradient, for instance, how steep that slope is over there, we use the term meters. This is the slope is 1,500 meters high. If you look on a map, how do we express altitude? We express it in meters. But what keys do we use? Trick beacons is expressed in meters. Spot height, expressed in meters. Benchmarks, expressed in meters. And lastly, contour lines, expressed in meters. So we use meters to determine altitude. Altitude, the height above sea level. Thank you.